Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel episode 18. My name's Morgan and my name's Will and on today's episode we're going to be taking you all over London to some of our favourite spots to show you how we can take some cool photos, little tips and tricks using phones, DSLRs and potentially even the digital camera. First stop, Hampstead Heath. Best friends and that's for life, who stay traveling? I'm talking worldwide, 65 countries between the two. Every moment is so unbelievable. Sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget. So tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as they gear up for the next adventure. Yeah. Woo! Best kept secrets travel. We've just arrived at our first location, Hampstead Heath, and we're gonna go find the viaduct for some brilliant photos. Let's go. Before we start the episode, you're probably wondering why we're in London. We were actually at the uh, Joshua fight last night. Well, we're normally near London. So we're close. normally near London, but we were in London last night to go and see AJ versus Uzek. Sadly, he lost, lost. but yeah. to be honest, didn't really deserve to win, but we're here now. And now we're here in London. We're in yeah. Hampstead Heath. And how can they support us, Morgan? They can support us by following us on all socials. So that's the BKS Travel on Instagram or Best Kept Secrets Travel on YouTube, podcast platforms and TikTok as well. And hopefully today we're also going to teach you a little bit about photography. We um, are and we, we, we're we in our first location. Here, Hamza, I do not want to walk back into, <laughs> into You don't the want to fall into it, but yeah. we've got the... There. Viaduct right behind us on Hampstead Heath, which is an amazing location, as you can see. Yep, so we've got some beautiful water that's not very, not very swimmable. I was just no, talking, talking away unless you're from a dog. Mic. So it's perfect for Morgan. <laughs> How nice! And then this beautiful viaduct, which we're going to try and take some pictures in front of. Don't do that, because then you're taking the mic away from us talking. Morgan's getting grumpy. So as you can see now, Morgan is taking some example photos. He's going through his settings, deciding what he wants for the f-stop for the ISO, because otherwise you can go for auto settings and that's fine, but it's not the best way to do it. Uh, Morgan's taking photos of me whilst I'm filming him. It's the best way of doing it because then you can get the best photo and you can do less post editing. So Morgan, do you know, interview style now, do you, do you know what our settings are for today? Okay, so the settings for today for this specific shot, what we're going to do is we're going to have a shutter speed of 1 over 80. So we're starting firstly in manual because it gives you the most options of different things to do. But the main things that I tend to change are the shutter speed and the aperture. And for this shot here, we've got an aperture of f4.0 and a shutter speed of 1 over 80. And that gets beautiful shots like this. And as you can see, it is perfect today. Sadly, it is overcast and some flat lighting so we're gonna to have to play around and get those shots and then I'm hoping I don't need to any well any very much post editing but we'll see what Morgan can come out with on the camera and then if you're watching on YouTube right now then you can pop up on the screen as we highly recommend so you can see the photos that we're gonna be doing online so the shot we've got here is we've got Will looking up to the sort of top right of the screen and we're going to have the viaduct to the left over his shoulder. So he's almost looking over his shoulder, not quite, off into the distance somewhere. And we have this very pretty viaduct in the background. And that is shot number one. So let's get on to the shoot. We're going to be now just getting some snaps. And if you're on YouTube, they'll start popping up any second now. So Now, Will, I really have to ask you. Why have you allowed me to have my collar up like this for the last 15 minutes? <laughs> I had no idea. Well, let's be honest. There's only so much you I can control, Morgan. And in this photo, this is one of our early yeah, tasty I think, shots. I think my clothes is probably one of them that I'd actually listen to. I was, I was more focused on the, the camera, the angle. Took a few photos of you and this, this one made it in... And what we can take as a lesson for other people is, is is review your photos. This is a photo right now for our listeners who aren't on YouTube at the moment of Morgan staring off into the distance and the entire... Well, really pretty tree. Yeah, the entire collar of his entire blazer is stood up right now. It's perfectly in focus. It's a good shot. It looks like I'm holding the collar up. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. It's your fault. You've I'm created not. this. It was up the whole time. You've created this. So, for, yeah, in terms of actual camera, everything's in focus. Super happy with this shot. We've um, actually gone for changing it to black and white. One of the reasons is sometimes it can sort of change the mood, the angle. It's really nice for light, but some people don't like it. It's just a massive personal preference for us. So, Morgan, is there a reason why you enjoy black and white photos? We do tend to use black and white a lot more often than I do, but I wanted for a lot of these shots to use different filters and different editing styles just to show all the varieties that you could get. The composition on this is very good. It's a nice half-body shot with, as Will said, me looking into the distance. I'm angled sort of, I'd probably say a 30-degree angle to the right, and I'm on the right side of the image and quite well lined up. Maybe we'd probably try and move me to the side so we can actually see the viaduct, but it is a very nice shot. And I, I don't tend to not smile, and I was trying to be as model-like as I could, and sometimes it doesn't go too well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on your model-like cheeks are filling Your model-like style. So this, this next one... More model-like <laughs> style, my God. My collar is down this time. Yeah, so this this was the photo instantaneously tree. after uh, after we was clock, just clocked the collar. Neck left and right. Left I don't think right. we're hundred percent happy with the focus on it at all. But you know, my look is better. I'm very. I'm, so this time I'm in the middle, and you actually can see the aqueduct over the right shoulder, and I'm still. Body is sort of facing angled to the right, but I'm looking to the left because I saw a new tree or maybe a doggo. I'm going to go for a doggo. Um, but I do actually like this one as far as non-smiling me because I don't normally do non-smiling. I'm a very happy person. You're normally a happy person. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you've got your Garmin in it, so if Garmin are out there and, yeah. and they want to sponsor someone... We will wear a lot more than one in every photo if it, if needs must. And the mirrorless camera shots, which this is shot on, are all edited in Lightroom. And we've used different editing and different styles. So a quick and easy tip if you do have Lightroom is they actually have some of their own presets. And this is one of their cinematic ones. Now, actually, this is one of our it. earlier shots. I love it when you hold a dead squirrel in your hand. So <laughs> for anyone uh, who's on the listening end or is watching and is unbelievably confused what Morgan's on about. He just picked up a dead squirrel. A, de a, the a dead squirrel is the name of the big fluffy thing. It's currently on our microphone at the moment and it is the big fluffy wind pop breaker on the end of the road microphone that we're using on our ZV-1 which we use to record now all of our podcasts and maybe just maybe at some point Morgan will stick a link in the bottom of the video yeah maybe maybe in season two we'll maybe. start doing it yeah but at the moment we're giving a free shout out to the ZV one anyway so this photo is the one which Morgan actually describes at the beginning of this section of our photography video where I'm looking over my shoulder. You've got the aqueduct just partially in the background, but funny enough, this was one of our earliest ones, hence why I'm still holding the camera, slash the dead squirrel. But it actually came out really nicely. My hair doesn't look too horrendous after yeah, the night. Yeah, you don't have long strands coming down your face. My, I, I do, my whole blazer, the contrast between the red in the scarf and the, the blazer scarf, works very well. The scarf is very nice. So Will is sort of wearing a dark greyish... Uh, trench coat trench coat with a white stripy top and this red scarf and the scarf works very well and i do like and i've said this before even though you are just holding a dead scroll on the camera i like that you're holding something because it gives you something more to look at in the photo and makes it more interesting for the humans to see i think one of the other things and we'll talk about it a lot later in some other photos is other than just getting your pose right it's also about what you're wearing so something like a scarf can create a lot more movement and has a lot more character in a photo so sometimes it's not just about you or the subject it's there's a lot more to it it can be what you're wearing what you're holding as morgan says having the camera there also makes this 
pose aspect's a lot easier because it feels a lot more natural just being there. Yeah, we're something. we're not natural poses whatsoever. So where are you looking in this one? Um, I'm trying to find my dig- there's, there's... my dignity. I lost the night before at the bar. Or are there squirrels up in the trees looking down at you, holding their dead, <laughs> I'm just dead thinking... sister? <laughs> So moving on to our next photo, is Morgan <laughs> Morgan looking like he'd gone the twelve rounds with Uzek the night before? Oh dear, no, because I could still <laughs> see. <laughs> but Morgan's looking very I'm solid very in this sad. photo. Maybe you put the squirrel on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I would probably say if we if we go back to your one quickly, what makes your more solemn look work better is you've got good light on your face but you're also looking up you're looking down like I'm you're looking, looking down. at a grave <laughs> I'm looking at the yeah and but as an actual photo it's really nice it's just more that just the our human modelling needs to it, improve yeah. but just like many people out there they they don't model we don't model oh I've modelled before yeah not professionally Morgan no, for charity. <laughs> <laughs> you are the charity in that case. But no, it's a really nice photo, this one, actually. I do like the um, the adjustments that you have done in post-edit. I think it gives it really nice grading to it. The one improvement I'd do is that... Shave you... my neck a bit. Okay, yeah, you could go picky there, but I, I more than your facial expression <laughs> than anything. Oh, and you can see how bumpy my nose is. I think your actual position in the focus of the fact that we've really got the full uh, viaduct in the back of the photo works beautifully well. Mm. And I mean, the lake there's super still, mainly because it's full of weeds, etc. But and doesn't move very much. Exactly, it, it's it's well, actually a really nice photo. I was about to say, I didn't notice before you've actually got the reflection in the water. Yeah, you do of yep. the viaducts and. Again, we seem so to. So, why aren't you happier the in the right. photo about that? <laughs> well, I didn't notice it. So, moving on to our next one. This oh, is something yes. Morgan I'm and I are a lot more used to is joking around in photos, smiling, having fun, feeling natural. This, this, I actually do look happy. And, Will, when you took this, you said that you really liked it. Why? Why? I like it because it's fun, right? You're pointing straight at me. I'm taking the mick out of you as I'm taking the photo. But for our listeners out there, the best way I can describe this is Morgan standing in front of a viaduct, a lake, and he resembles that poster where the person's pointing at you. But Morgan is saying Best Kept Secrets (laughs) needs you to subscribe and to follow us and download our podcast on Spotify, Castro, all our other channels and make sure you like this video because it really helps us out and please comment below because all of that feedback just gives us more to build on i mean who wouldn't say that and the reason that i do quite like this photo is because i'm in perfect focus but my hand pointing finger isn't and the depth of field the background is also very blurred as well and it does make it look very impressive and i think for a lot of these shots you will see them on Instagram, which is at the BKS Travel, and we'll post them, and you can tell us which ones you like. And if you're listening on podcasts, see if the photos live up to our descriptions of them. And also, if you have been to Hampstead Heath and you do know this location, or you live by, we'd love you guys send in your favourite photos that you've taken. Whether it's your dog jumping in the water and getting all muddy and wet and driving you insane or you're playing in one of the parks, or something along the lines in the Hampstead Heath area, please send them in because we'd love to see them. Nah. <laughs> Will, Will's just getting really tired here. He wants to move on. This was me pointing out to Morgan that I think it's time to go. <laughs> I'm pointing at my watch. I'm giving you a bit of a Dwayne Stern the Rock Johnson lip. raised eyebrow, just half the sides of it. <laughs> Yeah, so the composition we've done quite a lot often in that we always seem to be on the right side of the image and the aqueduct always seems to be on the left. Um, and your arm does look very rigid. You are, you are very, very excitedly telling me that we should be moving on. And, and then you suddenly say to me, Will, one more photo. 
So this is this is once again a case of using an object that you have or a piece of your jewelry or anything to help within the photo. So in this case, it's actually, I'm um, looking at my watch in a lot more serious tone. I'm on the right hand side of the photo, we've got the Vardak quite central, so there's a lot of green space, but it actually creates quite a nice depth to the photo, showing that how much room's behind. Um, but just the simplicity of having the watch. Yeah, so it's always having it's always good to have props to help you feel more comfortable when posing and feel more confident in front of the camera because you're thinking about something else, like, oh I've got to pretend that I'm looking at the time or checking my heart rate and stuff but this phone photo we actually did take on the iphone but i prefer it to the last one because of the way that will's angled his hand a bit not on so purpose right but it's angled more so you can see a bit more of the clock face and it makes the image stand out a bit more now time to go back to the live video partially a little bit tired um that's because of the walk We've now realised that wearing our blazers and heavy coats is getting a little bit sweaty. Especially on a hat. And uh, we're going to go and grab our stuff um, from my brother's house, which we ditched there. And then we're going to get on the northern line, which is going to be even warmer. So for anyone who doesn't know, the underground, amazing network. But Very warm. the Bad northern there, line is it. the deepest one and it is boiling hot. So this way. wish us luck. Oh, pigeons. Right, let's try not to get run over, but we're going to see you guys soon. And there might be a little bit of clips now, just uh, show, sh things up. showing the sweaty journey. <laughs> this, uh, th this wasn't actually a planned photo. This was, um, this was me being stalked on the train by Morgan. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. of COVID, I just tried to sit as far away from him as possible and took a picture of him on the sly. I actually do genuinely really, really like the photo. So explain the photo to the viewers. So we're on the Northern Line from uh, Hampstead Heath. We're on Tottenham, Tottenham Court Road. It was super hot. That's why I've got my jacket off over my arm, bags on the floor with my scarf on. I thought you were talking about the bags under your eyes. We're at one of the end of the carriages and Morgan was sitting diagonally opposite me and then turned and looked at me and all of a sudden he did his camera in hand and said i think this is going to be a really nice photo and he actually shimmied along one more seat along because he wanted to have one of the blue poles in front of him slightly in the image by the way this photo has in post edit been turned to black and white one of the benefits of that in this case is on the train you have lots of different colors especially the really bright blues from the likes of the priority seats the yellows from the emergencies reds from the alarm symbols and all the different bright colors which come in advertising so it's quite nice sometimes when you have so much going on to bring it back down to simplicity no one sat around me so it's just me and by having that pole in the photo in front but completely out of focus suddenly it gives a whole different feel to the photo gives the depth of me sat somewhere else as if as if it it gives a lot more natural look and feel to the photo yeah so we don't actually talk about it in the live but the underground is actually quite a cool place to take pictures, whether you're taking images of people on the train, always get permission. But we were quite lucky this time in that we did have a reasonably empty carriage. And I just saw the opportunity of Will looking happy. <laughs> um, I'm wearing a face mask. Morgan. <laughs> so, so I thought oh, I could tell it in the eyes. So I thought I'd take this shot. And, I, and as Will said, I was really happy with how it came out. If I was being really picky, it always irritates me that I'm missing his toe. Not that his toes are that impressive, but his left <laughs> toe... I'm wearing the, shoes. <laughs> left toes at the bottom of the frame is sort of just cut off. And I don't mind that. I don't at all, because it, it also... If it was blocked by the pole, I'd be perfectly happy. I think if you had... I think if you had the entire foot in frame, the whole shoe, I think it'd almost make it too far away that it's it's quite almost the depth of the photo is quite sort of close and intimate in terms mm. of it's a lot closer together it's tight feel but you've also managed to get so much in so we've just got to our next location but how did we get here first we Cheap. underground yeah nice and sweaty northern line Very from hampstead simple. station yeah got to tottenham court road mm. and then we changed there onto the central line and now 
Where are we, Morgan? I'll break it to you. So this is our second location, and we are right outside St. Paul's Cathedral. And we're gonna take some shots here of this beautiful place near this new shopping mall that gets this really cool angle of St. Paul's. And then we're also gonna go spinning again. Oh, where's my arm? We're gonna go all the way up to the top and there's a beautiful rooftop garden and I should probably stop saying beautiful. Let's get shooting. So Morgan's got his EOS R on him at the moment. He's got it there. Morgan, talk us through the first shot. So the first shot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a portrait here with St. Paul's in the background and we're going to use the shopping centre and these reflective glass uh, on the sides can to show. No, yeah, yeah, you can do. Take of us. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, no worries. Let's go for it. As you can see now, Morgan's now been asked to film, film away. We got a uh, St. Paul's over there. There we've got Morgan. So EOS R is matter. going to go. Lovely one down here. Right. There are humans in the way. I'll show you anyway. This, so, so the shot is kind of new. Uh, you can see, there we are. Nice little screen. So that's sort of angle you're gonna get and any of the finished stuff, we're gonna pop up the screen now. So if you're watching us on YouTube. What I really don't like about this image is the fact that I found out about this location on TikTok. And I've seen it multiple times on TikTok and have really wanted to go. You know those like TikToks where they show, hey, I found this new cool hidden location, here's a photo. They take a photo with all that hype music and then it just sort of goes to the pretty picture. It's quite embarrassing really. Yeah, I also think in terms of what we're going to show you on the iPhone, one of the key things about this photo, especially because we only took one lens with us for your mirrorless camera, I would much prefer a big fisheye mm. lens or something which we can pull back a lot further. I can't remember the restrictions on your camera, but I think because the lovely thing about the shot is having that really big depth vertically up into the shopping center, which you really get on the iPhone panorama, which we're going to show in a couple of seconds. But I think it's just good showing people that depending on what you bring, there's normally a way of trying to do it with a different means. So for example, in this case, it was more beneficial using a phone just, but then the phone photos obviously have limitations in terms of if you're, if you're planning on blowing it up for the likes of photo, whereas if it's just for Instagram, then a phone's perfect. So one of the best tools which most people have is their mobile phone, smartphone. Morgan's got an iPhone XR, I believe. And what he's gonna do is use a technique which a lot of people don't really really think about when they use a panorama shot they normally go for a horizontal shot but when you're trying to get a really nice top stretch out almost fisheye effect on here if morgan shows you here on the screen now you can drag it up so you start at the bottom and you put it to the top so morgan do an example now and then we'll quickly show them live do it from here so as you can see he's slowly just rotating keeping on the same axis and then as you rotate up, just try and get as few people in the shot as possible because then it's nicer and you don't get jumps in it from the panorama effect. So there you are, you get this lovely, nice tool shot, which has actually come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morgan's pretty impressed with himself, but that's how you do it. It's a great little nifty technique. You can use it to create a lot more depth in a shot. <laughs> right, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> You've always had long legs, you know. <laughs> if this proves anything, it's that you don't just have one go at a new trick. Yeah, so as we've just explained, this was one of our photos that we... One of our first attempts with a human. And if you've used panoramas before on the iPhone, you know, they not always do they go well. And not always And I think this is perfect. The point in this photo, as explained in the video, is being able to rotate your phone vertically upwards. And uh, <laughs> Morgan moved And it, way it is to make you go really long. <laughs> so I do look a bit like an umpalumpa, but actually the top no, half... are shorter. <laughs> like daddy long legs. Yeah, but look how short my upper half is. <laughs> Where's your we... arm? Where's your wrist? <laughs> yeah, you've just completely missed a section with the speed. 
and there's no one around us. It's perfect timing. The lighting looks absolutely insane. Yeah, it's quite good. The clouds actually look good for, for once. And then if we nice. go to the next one, which I took of you, it's perfect. I can't find a fault. Okay. You're actually posing pretty well for once. It's a different one. Your I, arms are out. I'm doing well with the jacket. I think the jacket gives you... Wear, wearing a jacket sort of gives you something to play with. And gives you lots of things to do. So you can either play with your cuffs. You can pretend to do the button. You can pretend to put it back. You can pretend to put your hand in your pocket. or well, not pretend because you're actually doing it. But there are so many options to pose with the jacket that it does make it a lot easier. And as you can see in this image, it's a very long, thin portrait. And you can really see how high up the shopping centre goes. And you can see the reflection of St Paul's on the glass window. And then obviously I look beautiful. So this, this is the best example I think that we have in terms of showing the depth and the way to see the photo. Just that, that panoramic effect. So many people assume that you, that you have to do it landscape just to get a big wide angle. But... That this is, you know, this our best kept secret of this episode is using panorama and using these features in a different way that you don't normally think because it just works so nicely. And I also just want to thank whoever built the shopping mall because they built it with the idea of doing exactly this and having people come and take this photo because they easily could have built, used all this space, all this open space and just built a building up to it, but they chose to do this and i'm <laughs> very grateful they did and then so this next photo we'll quickly turn over to it is very different lighting you know the light's a lot flatter it's not it's not bouncing between because that photo before is not that much brighter but just that tiny bit more brightness reflection off all of the shopping mall windows makes that drastic change even just the sheer color of the york stone flooring in the shopping center changes drastically but it's still a nice photo. You're actually looking more directly at the camera in this one. And smiling. Exactly, and smiling. But, you know, we did a little bit of post-edit in this just to brighten you up because there was so much light coming in from uh, the where's different areas. that human? I don't think there is that shot. human. Mor no, because it is that human. A Morgan, everything's reversed. Look, it's still a V-cut top. Morgan's losing the plot because at the over on the left hand side of the photo is a lady walking with someone I'd assume's a boyfriend and can see a reflection of her in the shopping mall and doesn't believe it's her. It's because we can only see one of them, but okay. So Morgan, we're gonna go go up in this lift in a second. We're in the lift. Going up St. Paul's. Trying to get up to, it's called the Madison Bar. It's a rooftop bar at the top of the shopping center or shopping mall, right near St. Paul. So as you can see, look at that shot now, even just coming up via the lift. Now this has come up well, so. I didn't think this was gonna come out so nicely. This is, we are, you know, right now in the video, we're mid coming up in the lift. Yeah, and I'm actually shooting through glass, which doesn't always work, but. I think because there's no light actually, like no strong sunlight or lights actually reflecting off the grass, it's actually made it possible to get this image. There's a good chance as well that, especially having looked at the colour of this building, that there's some form of UV film on the outside of this glass, which in its sense will act like a UV filter, like how you'd have an ND filter on your camera. And it's actually came out really nicely. I do really like the grading that you've done it. It's given it a really different mood and feel compared to any of the other photos which had previously to it. So, and, sorry. Well, you can actually see more of the reflection of St. Paul's as well, which I really like. Yeah, it, it's, it's giving it, for something so thin, it's still giving it quite a wide feel of, of the actual cathedral. But Morgan, shall we carry on to the, on to the sixth floor now? Let's go find St. Paul's. <laughs> So as you can probably tell, it's super windy up here at the moment. We've got St. Paul's Cathedral up here. It's a little bit harder to get a shot. Uh, as you can see, there's loads of barriers. There's a lot in the way. But if you're in the area, especially for the shot, which is down below. So it's just literally there. Yeah, the so the shot we did earlier is down below here. And um, all it's definitely best kept secret to come and visit the bar. And all you need to do to get up here is just go up the lift. And if you're quick, which we did do on the way up here, 
get a picture whilst you're going up on the lift because you still get that shot and it's very cool. So, St Paul's Cathedral from up close. We're going to start working our way over to South Bank and we might get a couple shots on the way. See you soon. So here I am. Can't find it. <laughs> There's this beautiful piece of it. Beautiful religious and architectural history in the background of this shot. And we decided... And my parents got married there. They did. They did indeed. And we decided that due to the shape, lighting and everything else... It was best for the pose to not be looking at the cathedral at all. So I look like I just can't see or will not look at the amazing building in front of us. Yeah, so Will sort of leant over the edge of the rooftop and just looking for more dead squirrels. And we actually didn't, we weren't too sure about this shot when we were up there. No, it's, really? it's come out really nicely. I just do... <laughs> can't pose <laughs> I just find it funny especially so we'll quickly flick to the next one so we're going from full colour to then a lot moodier black and white we've turned the head more to a 45 degree angle so instead he's of looking being... away from St Paul's he's, he's exactly he's, he's got more lost but sometimes if you're just completely perpendicular to a shot unless it's for a very very specific shot and feel for the photo it generally generally seems to cut off a lot of the face and the emotion of it. Yeah, you want to always aim for like a 45 degree angle and sometimes that ends up looking in weird places. I feel like maybe the shard was in this direction. The shard was in that direction, yeah. but to be honest, let's be honest. The, You're uh... looking for dead squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> no, St. Paul's Cathedral is a lot prettier than the shard, in my opinion. You know, it's a building which has survived so much, survived the blitz, survived, you know, so much over the years. You know. And I'm looking away from it. Yeah. <laughs> and what, but what am I doing? Let's see. <laughs> I've created a monster of a photo. Here. So, so Will is, has actually gone for a slightly different angle to me. So it's the same shot, but he's shot it from much lower down. So the human myself is on the right some pulls in the middle but he's shot lower down which gets more of more of my hands more of my body and more of what i'm leaning on the more i look at it the more i do think it's actually perfectly taken i'm not just saying it Bar me. your entire every aspect of you is perfectly in focus like going from your hand all the way along your arm up up to your shoulder and then your head it's such a nice photo and having that slight that differential between you and St Paul's Cathedral being slightly out of focus, but it's such a nice shot. Yeah. If I was being picky on myself, we're going to avoid my face because there's there's too many things I, I would actually change. use this as a... I would post that on Instagram. I, I, do, I do generate I would, it. I would open my, um, open my body up maybe another five or ten degrees. You just look like you've attended a funeral at St Paul's Cathedral, let's be honest. Because <laughs> I'm slightly closed up and I'd, I'd like to be more open. I'm trying to be more open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, it's a very hard-hitting photo. And a very good model. <laughs> right, let's go to it. Let, let's go to Millennium Bridge. We're currently crossing Millennium Bridge at the moment um, from St Paul's. It's really close, you can see in the background. Uh, there, around there, around there. So as you can see right now, Morgan's set up with his cannon, looking down Millennium Bridge and look at that shot there with St Paul's Cathedral. As you can see, he's happy. Reasonably a happy boy because there are lots of humans still on this bridge. So this is the kind of shot that would be best taken probably at sunrise, because then you'd have more of a chance of having nobody there and nobody in the shot. But this it really is a stunning shot and it's really iconic for London. Oh, you found it! <laughs> so, as you can tell from our last few photos we showed when we are at St Paul's Cathedral, I didn't seem to uh, know where it was. Although actually, have you found it or are you just looking at that bloke? Because he seems to be looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably caught like, what, because uh, What are you looking at? <laughs> I do genuinely really like this photo. Do I think it's 
the best kind of thing i, th- I think right. there's so much going on so we're over halfway down the millennium bridge at the moment and i've turned around looking back onto st paul's cathedral i'm slightly out of focus but the, did you, you know, think it was the pope <laughs> <laughs> so you've for anyone who doesn't know london at all or if you do and you just want us to describe the photo when you look down the Millennium Bridge from the end of South Bank, where the Tate Modern and the likes are, it's been designed so that it's perfectly in line to the other side where St. Paul's Cathedral is. So when you walk along it in the direction of St. Paul's Cathedral, it's perfectly in front of you and it's such a lovely view, which does make it very iconic for photographs. Sadly, this is not the perfect time of the day for it and it's much better to do it in sunset and sunrise well actually sunset sunrise be sorry is the best sunrise. yeah sunset you might be getting all the people coming back from the bar whereas if we show this next one I really like this because we ourselves so this one's a landscape compared to the last one which was a portrait but it's the same thing it's not got will in which always makes shots better um, the colouring is quite good and you see a bit more of St Paul's this way and the and more of the sides of the bridge, which look cool. I think the uh, grading that you've chosen is super complementary of the actual stone of the building of St Paul's Cathedral. This is quite hard sometimes when you do grading. Sometimes it makes the um, it can make the sky stand out too much, whereas it's actually made the sky a lot less relevant and put so much more significance on St Paul's. So one, well, I do think it's a nice one. The issue you have here is that obviously St Paul's is white and the sky practically was white at times, uh, which does make it harder when taking photos, especially when it's a bright white and it makes it really easily to be overexposed. But bar the humans in the way, this has come out very well. And what I was going to say is sometimes it's nice not just to create a singular subject. So in a lot of our other photos we're making it so it's subject based so either i'm standing in the photo or morgan standing in the photo whereas instead of this we've removed that completely and just used the people moving in public so it feels it feels actually more real it's really love short it's really lovely shot and it's quite arty but it also makes it feel quite natural as if you're in that moment you are walking along there you're going you're commuting to work the other side of the river i just thought of something there is one way we could have attempted to get rid of the humans photoshop not that way okay a couple ways is use your technique that you're using it later because if we had a static camera the people moving would blur out the way yeah you you, you could you could attempt a long exposure or actually it could come out quite well well yeah if we had a tripod we could have held a really long exposure and then the people would have just been slightly blurred into it and it would have made it look more like a rush hour shot, which could be really cool. And maybe we'll go back to London and do a whole episode just explaining long exposure and the different long exposure shots you can do in London and then we'll do a mixture of them all. We are currently on Waterloo Bridge and Will is setting up the next shot. And this is the fourth shot of the day. This shot will be using his iPhone. God, doesn't he look silly? And for this shot, we're also going to use the very iconic, here we go, British Red Butters, 007, a little bit of free marketing. And we wanted to get something, another iconic thing from London. We're here watching a Will in the Wild, preparing his shot. Got two buses coming. Away from us. I can't even. Yeah. For once, Will's being the idiot, doing the silly, reckless thing to get the shot. Oh, he's coming back. He's lost the nerve. He's getting nervous now. Beautiful views over London. We've got London Eye over there. So there's lots of things down there just short of the London Eye because that's called South Bank. And near South Bank we have lots of street art and markets, really nice food, drinks. And of course London Eye and we can see in the distance as well Big Ben but it's covered in scaffolding. Uh, otherwise we definitely would have used that shot. Oh, filming. 
So as you can see, took the shot here, trying to get the bus to the right hand side of the image. You need to make sure that you've taken the photo in live and to do that, when you're on photos here, you make sure that top little round bit at the top is yellow. So you go on the photo, you just swipe up, you go to the right, click on long exposure, and then on some of the shots, you can just create a bit of movement and it's a bit more fun. It's just a little tip and trick, which some people don't really see. It works better at night actually, because then the lights. actual bus itself has the internal lights and then it will be a lot more focused on it. But it's a way of just making things seem as if they're moving a lot quicker than they are. It doesn't really work on the smaller cars at the moment, especially because it's so bright. So as I've just shown you how I've done that shot on my iPhone, it's such a little nifty technique. If you do this, and I partially explained it, if you do this at night, the really nice thing is that you've got the light of the bus, but you've also got those amazing light trails that come from the cars. So sometimes you don't have to really stand in the road and you can be further back, but do make sure that when you do that at night, you try and keep the camera as still as possible when you click that photo button. It feels like it takes it really instantaneously, but the better you hold it still, the nicer it's gonna come out. Yeah, well, this, this is quite a fun shot to watch you do because for once you were doing the dangerous things and not me. But these these kind of shots are very clever and there's lots of different things that you can do. So you can actually see in the right, the humans are slightly blurred. So you can do this with people as well, which makes the shot very cool. And it's a very wide landscape, this one, with the blurry double-decker bus in the middle. And so currently we are on Waterloo Bridge, as I said before, and as you can see over there, wow, this is a slow, slow zoom, is St Paul's Cathedral, which is where we were just doing our prior shots. And then we walked all the way down the Thames on this side of the bridge, not, not that side, because we crossed for the Millennium Bridge. And then on this side where you've got the South Bank, which you have all the restaurants I mentioned earlier, you have the London Eye. Morgan's probably very zoomed into my face right now if Slowly you're on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And uh, you've got all the restaurants and bars along there, amazing nightlife, also really good on the day. You've normally got a farmer's market on a Saturday. And then you've got the famous London Eye. In the background, you do have Big Ben. If you're a tourist at the moment, do check online whether Big Ben still has its scaffolding up because as Morgan can show you now. Well, you don't need to check online. We can see that in the real. And this is you checking online. In the real, there is still scaffolding on Big Ben, unfortunately. It's a lovely evening in London, but sadly the show must end. Follow us on Instagram, on podcast. Download them all to help us plant trees. For every 50 downloads on a podcast, we plant a tree somewhere around the world for every 100 subscribers on YouTube, we plant a tree in a National Trust site in the UK. We are on Spotify, Castro, iTunes, and every other channel. He's lying, we're not ending now. We're going back to the studio, which isn't a studio. It's probably, it's studio. It's probably gonna be my bedroom or dining room or just anything. We're gonna go there now. See you in the studio. Let's go. So just due to the time frame, we, we didn't have time to get back to the studio. So. For our YouTube viewers, here's a photo of us, which I'm just going to throw up now, <laughs> of us once upon a time in our studio from a different episode. So enjoy that. We're just going to voice over and you can imagine we're talking. So, Will, what would be your favourite shot we took? If <laughs> You're going to hate me say this. I've kind of got two. And okay, okay, I fine. think if I go from a pure, pure photography basis and not, us judging ourselves i do think it's uh it's the last one we took of you at the top next to the madison bar looking <laughs> like you just attended a funeral i think the actual depth of that shot the fact we've got the focus perfectly on the black and white post edit encaptures so much more than just what we've planned. I think it's come out with a completely different story. It's come out with something which is actually really weirdly heavy. But if I go from it being like a purely artistic approach, I do genuinely really love that photo. What about you? I do really enjoy seeing you hold a dead squirrel. <laughs> okay, this is not a real dead squirrel. <laughs> I've, I've seen you hold one multiple times before. <laughs> and 
I I just really like how the shots work. The light on your face goes so perfectly. The sky is slightly overexposed, but you holding the object, what you're wearing, and the aqueduct in the background, I think, makes it a really good image. What what do you think is the worst shot? Bar, midget, long, will. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, we've got the jokey ones in there, okay, which are obviously I wouldn't put I wouldn't up there. Say they're bad shots, though. I think the worst one is the one done on the mirrorless of St. Paul's in the shopping centre, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'd put that on the basis of wrong lens for the place. I think the light. The, the, you mean the, the nice... floor one, not the lift one? Yeah, the one from the floor where you've got the shopping centre up the other side, I, I just don't think that encaptures anywhere near what you wanted to, especially when you compare that to the likes of the vertical panoramas off the iPhone. Mm. What about, what do you what do you think is trash? Trash. <laughs> uh, my collar. My collar is trash. There's that, and also I'd say, sadly, just due to the time and the fact we can be up in London much later... Well, actually, I, 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 would, I would like to do that on exposure. That's exactly what I was about to say. I was, yeah. was going to say, we're just trying to prove the point of different techniques, but at some point we will maybe post on our Instagram or do a mini clip episode on doing long exposures at night in London. We've cut, you've answered my, my next question, which was going to be, if there was a location, which one would you want to go back to? And I think it's both both bridges, really, we kind of want to go back to to actually get better shots there. Uh, what other locations in London do you think are good locations to shoot at? I'd really like to wait for Big Ben to have scaffolding down. I know there are some really nice, cool shots that we can get from there. I think we need to, to we need to venture to... They don't have it on there. <laughs> <laughs> we need to venture up to different parts of London. You know, Camden's got some really arty bits. I think Notting Hill, you can get some of the amazing marketplaces as well. But it depends. It depends really what the shot you're going for. Are you going for a more architectural shot? You're going for more of a in the London life shot. Are you going for a shot where people think it's a bit more unique because they wouldn't have thought to do it there or didn't really know that area? Yeah, and I think with London there are literally thousands of different locations where you can get amazing shots and just by and this was moving on to the last question just by doing this sort of if i call you guys watching or listening research you're learning about these different locations and what shots you can take what way would you look up different locations and find places in london to shoot if you haven't been before so weirdly i've actually found a lot of them generally through instagram or seeing friends who are traveling or into TikTok. London. <laughs> I I haven't used TikTok myself of finding locations. It's normally through Instagram, normally sticking hashtags somewhere. Even if you hashtag London and then look at the top ones on the most recent ones and just give a really quick scroll through and just see if anything instantaneously grabs your attention because that will be the genre which really intrigues you and could be really fun to shoot if you haven't done before. And I think very easy ways to do it, as we say, with a lot of... Uh, a lot of our episodes is using Google, the largest search engine in the world, but also YouTube, the second largest search engine in the world. Are They are both amazing tools for researching. You can literally type in most Instagrammable and then put in the location and you'll find all these amazing spots that you may not have known before, even on your doorstep. And now, last thing but least... Please like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, follow us on all of our podcasts. And if we can get you guys to do one thing is to send us in your favorite photos and we will show them on the channel in one of our future episodes where we go and do photography and we'll discuss or we can even review, break down our favorite photos or some of the interesting photos that you've sent in. And also we'd quite enjoy if you could comment below which one's your favorite photo and tell us why. And I know that we're not we're not actually in the studio, but I'm gonna get Will to just reuse a roll the outro. Yeah, let's make it happen. I hope that you can handle uh, going on.
on adventures, best kept secret travels, yeah, all over the globe, having fun, you know the deal, amazing secret locations, hang out with Morgan and Will, uh, educating, entertain, haggle in the market, uh, sharing their experiences, time to get it started, let's go.